All right, we're going to get started. Um, I think we have 45 participants on it, so that's a very healthy number. And thank you very much for, Fantastic. for participating. Fantastic. Uh, this is the first in what we hope will be a series of FJMC webinars using Adobe Connect. Uh, I'm Bob Watts. I'm from uh, Congregation Olam Tikva in Fairfax, Virginia, in the Seaboard region. And I'm the chair of online and remote training for the FJMC. And uh, we have with us as a presenter today, Mark uh, Givers, who is VP of Midwest region. And I'll give you a little bio on Mark. Mark's originally, as he mentioned, from Salisbury, Ocean City, Maryland. And he's graduate of the University of Maryland. And he lived in Tampa for 20 years after graduating. And he's uh, past president of Congregation B'nai Amuna Men's Club in St. Louis. And he's now a member of the club board and the synagogue board. And he's also chairperson of Synagogue's Camp Scholarship Committee and in national uh, and international FJMC circles. He's on the HMV planning committee for the 2013 convention, and he's also one of the leaders of the Hador Haba initiative of FJMC. On the personal side, Mark's a senior IT analyst with AT&T, which is why he was the, one of, a good choice for one of the first presenters. And uh, he's married almost 20 years nine years to Alice, and they have three children, Aaron, Glenn, and Steve. Aaron, yeah, Glenn, and Steve. So the way we're going to conduct this is uh, Mark is going to deliver his presentation, and you'll see the chat screen on the right-hand side. Well, we're not going to turn anybody's microphones on because this is going to be conducted as a real webinar, and so we will not have the, uh, the participants can only uh, take part by typing in the box at the bottom of the chat screen. Now I'd ask you to hold off questions until Mark is finished with his presentation and then you can ask questions by typing in the box and I will pass them to Mark to respond to. And uh, at the end, uh, you know, as I mentioned, we will send this presentation out, The uh, the PowerPoint presentation out to the participants, as well as uh, put the video online. Now, if anybody has any objection to being included in a video, just don't type anything in the box. Otherwise, uh, we're recording this session for, for later viewing. So I'm going to stop my webcam and turn it over to Mark. OK. Oh, boy, I get to be big. Thanks. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, greetings from St. Louis. Um, I, as you may have heard earlier in the chat, we are in, uh, lined up with some of the thunderstorms that are rolling through the Midwest. Uh, we may, If you hear a little lightning and thunder in the background, it's not going to be severe tonight. Just get a little show, so don't worry. Um, and as you can see on the screen, att Attracting Younger Men's to Your Men's Club was the, is the topic tonight, and, but we're going to spend a little time on that. I want to focus a little bit more on how to retain them, because we, we hear a lot about how to, to attract younger guys, but we don't really hear what's next, and I'd like to, to add some thoughts about what's next. One of the um, interesting things, though, when you go to the internet and you type um, Attracting Younger Men, um, be, be very careful. Don't do that on your work computer. You, you may get some interesting uh, responses. So I would, I would, I would suggest that if you do that, you do that on your home computer, and uh, be very careful what you get. But that was my little quick uh, little levity there. There we go. Got a couple smiles back. Okay. So. Like I said earlier, we're going to talk about not just attracting the younger guys, and, and really all guys. We can say younger guys, but and there was a couple. I already saw a chat in there uh, attracting uh, men of all ages, but we're going to talk to that. But we're going to talk about retaining and grooming them for, for future leadership roles in your shul and your club, and and hope, hopefully eventually your region. And I'm not going to um, read all these all these screens to you, but the first step is to find the guys. Yep, that's it. We're looking them out, figure out where the heck they are. And there's three uh, major themes here. Uh, the first is just look around, ask people that you see, and with that are people that are in shul. Uh, guys respond well to being personally asked. 
it does work better than the internet it does work better than social media it does work better than email by physically walking up to them shaking someone's hand and asking them the second box on, on, the, on the bottom left, I, I, I talk about if your shul has an auxiliary such as a childhood center, a preschool, a young couples club, um, young families organization, find a way to get in front of those guys. Show up at a meeting and speak. Bring some bagels. Talk about um, ways that you, you know, um, things that your men's club does that's a, attracting to your um, to the folks in, your, in that particular demographic and get up in front of them. It's okay if women are there. Actually, it's probably even better because their spouses, the wives of these guys may say, hey, you should get involved with these guys. Go, you know, go out and do something with them, especially if you have some activities that sound like they're really fun. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more. And the, and the last bullet in the red type, it does take time to change your organization. It, you're not going to um, change the uh, decades-long reputation of your club overnight. It's going to take time. But the other side of the flip kind of it is make sure you're sincere. You're not just attracting guys just so you can say you're attracting guys, younger guys. You want to um, you wanted to nurture these folks and, and build a good reputation. And think about what I say there in, in the screen. When you have a negative experience, when you go to a restaurant that's not good or go to a business that's not good, you're not going to just not go back there, but you're going to tell a whole bunch of people how rotten that particular business or how rotten that particular restaurant was. On the flip side, not as many people share good experiences, so you have to just be a little bit patient with this. But you know, to do your best to, um, when the guys come, you want to make sure that you're taking care of them right, so they don't have that negative experience. So, I did some research, talk about volunteering, and I identified se seven quick points that we're going to talk about today. The first one is achievement. I'm not going to sit here and read this whole thing for you. The kind of the key words out of this is important and appreciated. They want they want these younger guys want to fill roles that maybe nobody else can do. So make sure you, you allow them to, to feel like an important part of the cause. Don't just put them there for show. Like you don't you don't want trophy young guys. There's a nice quote here. The, the key takeaway from this particular fee, feedback here is, is by communicating respect. That's why we started this webinar on time, um, to, to give the respect to the people that, that got here on time. How often have you shown up early to volunteer for something, and then you just end up sitting around and waiting? Or when you show up, there's nothing to do. There's too many guys there. Or the, or the people that are, have organized the event are not particularly organized. So when the guys show up to, to volunteer, et cetera, you know, have tasks for them. They don't have to be the biggest tasks in the world, but have stuff ready to go, have the, try to get the right amount of people go. And then publicly, and we have handwritten notes, or pub, uh, publicly stand up and speak to them, or even having a year-end appreciation event to thank the folks that, that join and, to, and help out with that. The event here, that what I'm trying to show here in this next slide is when you de when you delegate, it, it's it's okay to allow people to um, find their own way, find their own path to to the end. You don't have to have the entire program stepped out all the way, all the way out. In other words, show them what needs to be done, answer the questions, and then step back and let them do it. This opportunity not, not only makes them satisfied, but then they'll come in and bring their own friends. And Rich, I hear I see your note about the audio, so hopefully it's getting a little better. There's a if if some I'm in IT, and there's a if some of you may may have heard about a um, a computer animation a, a computer animation called Boyd's. For those folks in New York, that's how birds are pronounced in New York, Boyd's. And, and, and the Boyd's program, basically, you can take a, a, with your cursor and move, uh, move an object from one side of your screen to another. And what appears to be a flock of birds will fly from point A to point B. But all the birds don't necessarily fly the exact same path, one behind another in a nice line. Birds fly. They, they find a different group. They all end up getting there, but they all choose their individual path. So 
you need to, when you delegate and, and give ideas out, let everyone choose their own individual path. It may not be the path that you chose for them to, to, to go down, but that's okay. Let people go. Younger guys are very attuned to social change, giving something back to the community. FJMC, as I state here, has Solar Nair Tormid, Hear Men's Voices, and K-Roof. Those are what develop for social change. But there may be guys in your community that have a different idea of social change. What events would they like to fulfill? What events would they like to create that would be helpful for them? Would they make them feel like they're giving back to the community? Um, I've seen torch awards where for Sukkot squads, guys get the groups of three or four guys get together and they go to homes of folks who can no longer cr construct their own Sukkot, do, whether they have an injury or whether to just a you know aging population, go out there and help them out. Other ideas that I've heard is the um, where we have a fo elderly folks and, and there's squads of guys that go out and do small minor home repairs, fix fences and gates and doors and, and do a little bit of light painting or whatever might need to be done around someone's house, a little plumbing drips, things like that to help out folks, change, you know, you know, you know fi fix up some minor, minor, fix, minor fixes. So those are great ideas for younger guys. Get some out, get some doing stuff, and they become advocates for you, for your club and for themselves. The next step is about family ties. These multi-generational programs, whether the guys are getting involved with their parents or their children or their wife or combination of, of those, it really resonates well with younger guys. If you guys want to hear about the, like some of the programs we've done locally with that, I'll be happy to talk to you about it later. But, but, but multi-generational programs are really great. And, and let the younger guys help plan these programs. The next step is about group setting. Younger guys do well in group setting as a rule. Let them go. Let them like it, like it, like I said earlier. Let, let the guys flock together any way they want. You can build camaraderie with T-shirts or buttons or whatever. Just something to build group identity, make it fun, and let them charge them with the task and let them go off and do it and come back to you with ideas. The last topic is flexibility. Sometimes with family pressures, guys don't have the ability to come to a meeting at 10.30 on Sunday morning or at 8 o'clock on a Tuesday evening. Sometimes they do their best work at 10 or 11 o'clock at night. Let them, let them email you a report or a preliminary report. Let them dial in via conference call for 15 minutes of your two-hour board meeting and then make their, make their presentation, answer questions, and, th and then go back to the families and to the wives or to the work. You know, there's a lot of work stress on, on younger folks these days, well, on, actually on all of us. So, you know, be flexible with the younger guys. They may, may not like the idea of coming, sitting around a table and, and eating bagels and talking about health issues and, and have all the other guys' problems, they wanna, but they want to contribute in a meaningful way. So use some technology there. So the bottom line, learn how to use these guys, whether young, younger men or not. Just, just don't attract them. Learn how to involve them and use them wisely. And you, you're, you're, you're get good benefits from that. And that's my brief presentation. That's the last slide. OK. Um. So I and see the person who can tell me whose that... picture this is, it can win a prize. <laughs> Um, okay, now that everybody's on and Rich Neb just asked this question, um, can you hear me now, Mark? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave your pretty face up there on the screen. Lovely. Uh, uh, if you didn't, if you didn't RSVP, um, send an email to training at fjmc.org and I'll put you on the list and, um, uh, and send the PowerPoint presentation out to everybody. I think I could upload it to a central site and send out the link, but sometimes we have a little trouble with with 
permissions or people being able to access our site for download. So I think it's easier if I just send it out to everybody, just simply send out your, um, send it out to, and I'll type, just type in the email here, training at fjmc.org and I'll send it out to you uh, shortly. Um, so we have a question for Mark from Harry Baker. How do you deal with apathy? Harry, could you uh, type in, you mean apathy on part of the club or apathy on part of the guys that you are trying to attract? Not quite sure if I understand the, the, com where the angle you're coming from. Okay, apathy on part of the guys to attract. Okay. In the beginning, it'll be a little bit difficult, uh, especially if you have the first few guys that, it, that you're trying to, to bring in. So if you can maybe find two or three guys that, that maybe hang out together and invite them to come into your club as a small group uh, um, with a special project, um, maybe that, that would be a great way um, to, to, to do it that way. If you bring in one guy or two guys, just by themselves on their own, not knowing the other younger guys there. You're right. You may, you may not have a, a good um, um, feeling from the from the younger guys. So that would be uh, a, a one suggestion: is to, like I said before, group them. You know, bring a group in together. Talk. Maybe you see a group of guys hanging out with their children, a kiddish, and talk to them and and ask them to, to come together and and to come to one of your meetings and and see how the men's club could benefit them and their lives. What things that they they may be looking for and um, ask, ask them to come and, and, and speak to you guys and, and, and give some, looking for their, their, their valuable input. Uh, we had a comment from Stan Schnitzker, uh, Schnitzer, who said personal requests are good. That's how he got involved in his first club 30 years ago. But St Stan also asked uh, if there are, what are two or three good multi general generational programs that have worked well okay um, we've had a couple of very successful programs with that um, our, our, the one we actually won a little torch award last last convention it was called dad and me uh, where we did co-partner co with our early childhood center and the dad and me program was simply a free program we had fathers and or grandfathers come in with their preschool aged children we f we fed them breakfast we had a 20 25 minute ruach session and then we um, each um, child and their parent or grandparent sat down and, and created a craft project to take home uh, the first year we had a, a um, someone came in um, in, into this group who um, worked at a shoe factory and it had a bunch of leftover vinyl from the shoes and they took those and and, they, and, they, and then we pre-punched some holes and the kids could um, tie string and signs and stuffing and put stickers all on the vinyl and they made up nice little signs for you know and, and little things for their dad so that worked out really well um, what well, the secret to that particular program since we co uh, co marketed with uh, a, um, with, with the um, early childhood center is that not all of the guys who came to the early not all the guys who had children at early childhood center are members of the congregation but that's okay we got those guys involved in actually in the actual planning of the event as well so that and then some of those guys as the children got older and they joined the shul of course gravitated right to men's club because we were one of the first groups to welcome them to the men's to the men's club um, another um, multi-generational program that, that, that I've heard um, work really well um, is the um, um, worldwide rap parents children and grandparents learning how to put on to fill them together a lot of times you, you can you can we have a lot, of the, a lot of the clubs have to build a pair where they help the children build the tefillin, but then you invite the parents and the grandparents to come and learn learn or relearn or remember how to, to put the tefillin on. And of course, if those parents or grandparents are experts at it, then you uh, um, then you can um, they can also help with with the children as well. So that's a great uh, multi uh, generational program. Yeah, that uh, ours uh, has been very successful at that at uh, Olam Tikva. Uh, for example, this year, my son's bar mitzvah was last year, and I 
gave him, I handed him down my first set of tefillin and got a new pair for myself. But, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, he got a, a thrill out of uh, putting it on with other kids. Um, we have a question from uh, Ben Aminia at Temple Alia. He said, volunteer time is a valuable resource, which is not unlimited, should, should be used wisely. How do we know yes. when, to, when to stop asking for more help? Um, you can, if, you, if you're a student of humanity, you can pretty much tell by body language or, or how, how enthusiastic people come, you know, to your events. A lot of times they'll simply tell you, I'm available to help once or twice a year and that's it with my family and my job. There, sometimes that they're telling the truth because that's truly the way there is and sometimes that's just a defense mechanism so they don't get pulled in too soon, you know, too much, too fast. But that being said, just, just kind of have a feel for people and read people. And if, if they come and they're enthusiastic and you feel like you're overusing them, just tell them, hey, um, if you'd like to come and help, that's great. But, you know, we have some other guys I'm trying to work in, so we're going to rotate some other people in and out and go that way. I think uh, I'm going to combine two questions from Dan Hammer and Lou Crane. You know, even if you make your efforts to put the arm on uh, folks, uh, you know, but have no luck uh, and – you also run up against from Ukraine. You run up against guys who say they're too busy. How, mm -hmm. um, you know, how do you counter counter that? You know. They... Well, that's true. We're all busy. We're all all the lies. I, but I have found in my in my in my life, and I think I've seen it in a lot of the other leaders, um, not just in a synagogue, but at work and and other other volunteer things that that I do, is that the busiest people tend to find time to do even more. The busiest people love diving in and doing stuff. Um, they um, sometimes those busy guys may have to ask permission from their spouses or their children to get away. But there are many times where they just you know. Busy people just seem to find time to do stuff, and it's it's I don't know how or why it, rhyme or reason, but but it but it's just I just seem to, to see that a lot. Um, Dave Freeman uh, pointed out that the father-child baseball game night was popular. Uh, if you're yes. lucky enough to have a uh, baseball. Uh, if, if you don't have a major league team, if you don't have a major league team, I, I suggest a minor league game. Even here in, in St. Louis, we have a couple of minor league teams nearby. They're very affordable. They're very family friendly. They're right up close to the field, and it's a lot less expensive than a major league game. Yeah. Okay, go uh, ahead. I'm sorry. And Bruce uh, Gordon, who's you know, used points out that hearing men's voices is a great way to break the ice and and you've been involved in that uh, i have uh, we hold our hearing men's voices at around um, eight o'clock at night from eight to nine thirty and although that sounds like it's really late um we have it because the people uh, the the uh, the the younger guys with young children find that it's a good time for them to have to take their children eat dinner put the children to bed and by then the wife's um the wife says okay you can go and you know if it's uh, the events at eight o'clock and 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 it works it seems to work really well if you do a weeknight event that way yeah bruce said uh had pointed out you know when we've done hmv and uh the um i think you answered the crane's question uh eric Gamunder, i hope he's saying the name right points out that they try to do a family-oriented event every year in doing indoor rock climbing, mini golf, and gaga. Okay. And I think my experience has been that, you know, other organizations, we have a young men's organization who just uh, has dads getting out of the house. We have sister who, do, who does women-oriented things. But I think that, in a way, the men's club has a niche in doing these more family-oriented events. We had a but but, but we also had a young men's out. We have an outing at a thing called, in some cities it's called Whirly Ball here in St. Louis. It's called Demolition Ball, where it's a combination of, of, of bumper cars and, and like, and um, you get a little and a ball and a wicker thing and you throw it into the basket. And it's, 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 it's very fun. And, and we just charge a nominal fee and we have beer and pizza and we have two hours of it and, and people love it. We get 45, 50 guys come out for that. Um, the, um, uh, we have a good question from Warren Sterling. Any role for clergy in helping to attract members? And I think, you know, it would be younger members since we're focusing on that. Uh, yes and no. Um, 
clergy are good, but clergy can be intimidating, um, especially in small settings like hearing men's voices and, and things like that. So we try not we try to ask our clergy not to come to those events. I know it's not um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of. It's not um, uh, it's politically correct sometimes to say that, but but it's sometimes better, for, especially for hearing men's voices. When there's not an expert in the room, hearing men's voices seems to do, do well. Sorry, my computer keeps timing out. The um, but clergy can encourage the guys to come if your club has a good reputation for doing good work around the synagogue. If you're known for something that benefits the community or benefits the shul, um, our particular shul, um, our men's club raises money. For all, almost all of our fundraising through the year comes with, for camp scholarships, and um, where we raise money and the money goes to the camp scholarships. That's how I ended up in the camp scholarship committee. But the um, and our synagogue is known for that, and, and things we raise money for go to that when we. When the Women's League has an event, there's a, there's a fundraising show where the guys are always volunteering to bartend, and we and we keep the tips to go to the to the, to the um, camp scholarship fund, things like that. So if you're known for a good cause, a good reputation, the rabbi will definitely push younger guys to to get involved. Um, Dan Moldover from Beth Emmett in Herndon, Virginia, points out that for folks who are too busy, you can schedule events at different times or days, and just yes. keep asking them, make sure they know what those options are. Um, right, have a variety of schedules and variety of times, yes. And, uh, you know, we try to mix it up because, uh, you know, not all guys are available on Sunday morning. People play sports. Um, and, uh, and during the week is challenging for other guys. Uh, are we... Um... I saw a question about Whirly Ball, by the way. Um, if you go to Google Whirly Ball or... or uh... Um, what's it called? Is it St. Louis again? I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. But um, Demolition Ball, you can find some websites that have descriptions on them. Usually they have little videos. It, it, it's a hoot. It's a, it's, it's, a ton. it's a ton of fun. Um, Bob, earlier in the chat before the thing started, someone, a gentleman was asking about attracting older guys as well as attracting younger guys. That was at the beginning, yes. Yeah, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, Sometimes bringing younger guys in and bringing the energy that's associated with younger guys will attract older guys who weren't involved in the club because they didn't like the stale atmosphere of the older guys that were there in the establishment of the club. So we have had guys that that went that moved away from our club who have come back and got in, involved and more and 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 involved not just in coming to events but involved with leadership. Guys that were involved in the club 15 or 20 years ago, but felt the club got stale. And then, as, and then as they saw us get younger, they saw the energy and they saw the different and the, and the innovative programming that we were getting out there. And guess what? Those, some of those guys are coming back. They said, "I gave up on men's club, but now I'm back." Oh, that's great. Um, Steve Jacobs pointed out that uh, you know sometimes you have guys that come for a specific event, but never. You know, they're not seen elsewhere uh, during the year. And, uh, you know, you know, you'll have some for specific events, but not for for others, which I think speaks to what we've been discussing about, you know, providing a That's variety, okay. variety of options. Absolutely. Uh, not everyone's going to come to the scotch and Sukkot tastings. Not everyone's going to come to your Whirly Ball event. Not everyone's going to come to your baseball outing. Not not everyone's going to come to the to the event for small when you have some, when you're involving dads with small children because not everyone fits every demographic or, and and people are busy and that's okay if we see them two or three times a year and they have a good time and they understand what men's club does and and they and and they appreciate the the social action that that the particular clubs do I think that's um, all good that's okay and Rob Rob Levine from Hudson Valley points out that uh, a good point that guys will come out if you can get their friends and he said yes. they're trying to get some of the young leaders of the shul to participate through continuous invitations and reach out to get their friends involved and i think given the initiative of bruce gordon and our club and a few other guys we've been able to do that get some of the, the young leaders and and uh, uh put them in as you pointed out leadership roles in our club as well um, Yes. What other questions are out there? 
Well, somebody asked if the uh, formal presentation is over. Yes, if you want to leave. Okay. But uh, the... Um, nope, uh, nobody. Anybody type in the name of the guy that's half his face in his picture there? Some of you guys should recognize this face there. But go ahead. It's not me. But uh, Mike Kramer uh, suggests that we create a... Oh, there's a video link from Stan Snitzer for a demolition ball. Here okay. On YouTube. That's nice. Uh, thank you, yep. Stan. And then the one in uh, St. Louis has it. Absolutely, yep. Uh, and then Mike Reamer uh, said, create a survey, ask younger men what they are interested in or how they would like to be involved, give them an incentive to complete the survey. I think that's the trick. Have you ever tried surveys, uh, Mark, at your... Uh, in your experience? We tried. It, it doesn't work as well as you think. You, you, you get a few responses, but not nearly as uh, the volume you get. We, we tried even doing survey for our board meetings for the elections instead of doing them in person. We, we figured not everyone could come to the board meeting, so we put it out on, on a survey monkey form, and we didn't really get that much response. It was really kind of disappointing. Um, uh, I think I'm going back to my original point, personal touch. When you're having that conversation with that person in the kid after kiddish, or while you're waiting to pick up your child or children from religious school, or you see it just happened to see them in the grocery store, ask them what what would they would like to see men's club had. If there was one thing men's club could do, what would it be? What would it do? And what kind of event would you like to see? And would, and, and and then if you and this person says, I, I would like. Um, I, I, this particular event that you don't have, he describes the event, and they say, "Great! If we created an event like that, would you come?" And they, if they go, "Yeah," then you create and you try to create an event that matches matches that. If it's obviously if it's um, something you guys can do, try it. Um, Dan Moldover asked if there is a rule of thumb for mix of returning programming versus new programming. I think this is uh, not. Uh, directly, I mean, it's kind of related to attracting younger men. I think uh, Mark wants to comment, but I would comment that, you know, just just having new and innovative programming obviously is is a help to bringing in younger men as well. Mark? Absolutely. Um, one mistake I think we made in the beginning when we started getting a lot of younger guys on the board is that some of the, some of the old guard we, we did lose some of them. So make sure you don't take away too much programming. You want to ease it in um, and ease in some new things. Don't take away what's working. Freshen up what's that's what's out there that's marginally working or needs needs to be reinvented or, re, or re-imaged somehow. Um, and just try it. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to the way you did it before. Uh, Bart? Bart Bookman commented that there are a lot of families with children in religious school who do not participate in single uh, in synagogue events, including bringing their pre-bar child to services. Now, if I could just jump in here, one of our tactics has been to actually set up marketing for our events, you know, on Sunday morning when services are about to, when, uh, religious school classes are about to begin. We'll actually try to grab people dropping off their kids. If we're having a brunch or other uh, activity then or an upcoming activity and, and market directly to them. I think I heard a story once, I don't know, what, don't know if it was at LDI or somewhere, one of my trainings, you, you give them half a bagel and then on the line in the parking lot, right? Is there, where's the lox and cream cheese? We'll come in for, the, for that and, the, and, the, and more bagels. Um, our club, we you don't have you do not have to be a member of our synagogue to be involved in our men's club. Uh, we do that on purpose because we do have the um, the early education, uh, the, the um, preschool attached to our building, and, and because of that data me program, we have attracted guys who help plan it, and they have been involved with their men's club. But they're not, but these guys just aren't quite ready to join the synagogue yet. Either the children are too young, and they don't have the financial. They're not financially ready, or whatever the life circumstances are out there. And we don't make that a hindrance. Or we, our, our board voted to allow non-members of our synagogue um, to join, um, and we think that's a great way just to get them involved and 
men's club dues, a lot less than synagogue dues, and and eventually these guys will get more involved with the synagogue, they become familiar with the with the other guys there, and we've had a high success rate of those guys joining the shul. I need to uh, mute my phone. Yeah. yeah. The uh, Mike <laughs> Mike Mills Sorry. pointed out. Uh, going back to the subject of getting the the clergy involved, he said it's hard to say no to a rabbi when he when he asks to enroll someone, and I think that uh, we found that that's uh, important too. If we can get uh, rabbi's support for our events, or um, um, for our activities. Uh, Rich Neb asked if uh, at convention FJMC will be offering hands-on training with social media. I don't know uh, what the decision has been on that. I don't know if Mark's heard anything. I also have a role working with new media with the FJMC, and I have a presentation that I did at our Seaboard retreat last year on this topic as well that I would make available to anybody. I think I think uh, Rob... Um... Rob has Cantor done. From, from, yeah, Rob Cantor has done it for a couple of conventions, hasn't he? From Florida. Yes, he has a presentation he did at last uh, convention as well, and Rob and I have discussed these these issues. Sometimes it's a tricky issue because the synagogue leadership may not want constituent organizations setting up their own social media accounts, mm -hmm. uh, which is something we've run into. So we try to work with the synagogue leadership on uh, getting getting the news out. I'm not, and I'm not particular. Me personally, I'm not the particular savvy um, uh, on Twitter or, or things like that. So that's not my cup of tea either. All right, what other questions are out there? I see a lot of chats going by, but I'm letting you read them for me, Bob. Um, I think that uh, we have a few comments. So you have. Uh, Rob Levine says he's going to try a pickup wiffle ball. Uh, what do you do? Michael Levine, as we know, said, my chapter is a history of many years of being close to a one-man show. No one wants to, seems to want to get involved. How do you fight that? Mm, boy, that's a tough one. The perpetual president. Um, well, if, if if that guy feels like he owns the men's club, it, that that may be kind of hard. That um, I, you there may you may I saw I think I saw a chat fly by that one synagogue has two clubs and uh, a dad's club, a, a, an older men's club, and a, and a, and a not so older men's club. You may want to reimage, you know, as a as something slightly different. That that that's a really tough one, but um, I think that's probably where the clergy could come in, and the clergy could say it's okay to. To, to this guy who's been doing it for many many years, it's okay to back off and let somebody else give it a try, um, and that maybe that person has scared away or intimidated away other people from joining. Maybe his particular personality is not conducive to, to folks in the shul, and you may have to have somebody um, help and in, in, intervene with that, or maybe they even say, hey, you know, take a break for a year or so, and or or, or back off totally, let someone else help you with the leadership, become a a co-president or, or someone who can help you and, and 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 maybe that'll help get some new ideas in the club but that is a very very hard question yes yeah our, it's actually our club that has the two clubs <laughs> one oh okay uh, or is that yours okay one younger men, men's club called abba that's the one for the dads to get out of the house and okay uh, and that was uh, supported by a assistant rabbi a few years back and we're trying now to uh, reach out to those guys and bring them into the to the men's club proper because they don't pay. That's just a social organization. They don't yeah. pay dues. So, you know, we're really trying to co-opt them rather than trying to, uh, you know, to compete with them. Uh, and I think if you yeah. find a situation like that, you know, that's the best and, way to go. And hopefully everyone's club's bylaws have a have term limits. But go ahead. What other questions are out there? What are the uh, Barry, Barry Goldschmidt uh, pointed out that men's clubs should diversify their events to attract a wide range of members. And he said, suggested incentives to attract new members, such as discounts at sure. breakfast speaker events. Absolutely. Uh, the the um, Michael discounts or, uh, or, or, or dues abatement for the first year or any, anything creative like that. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Uh, Michael Miller asked how you reach out to a non-Jewish spouse. Uh, you know, who's a absolutely member. should be absolutely they should be welcomed into the men's club. Absolutely, one hundred percent, absolutely. There should be no reason that if you have if you got a woman and her husband is not Jewish, that that, that shouldn't matter at all. Bring them in. You may not have that particular person um, help you um, with the men's club Shabbat so much that they, they can probably help you with some of the social event plannings or whatever. It's absolutely fine. As a matter of fact, we have some very active guys in our club who are exactly in that situation. It's a great question. You know, do, you know, it's it's at all about the K Ruv initiative with with um, FJMC. Don't do not let the uh, uh, the uh, the non Jewish spouse be feel excluded. Make them feel welcome. It it, it goes a long way. It, not just for a men's club. It, it's a it's a it's a, it's all about being a match as far as I'm concerned. The um, Jeff Edelman following up on this uh, asks: Are dues more for dues more for non synagogue members to join? Men's club, does your synagogue support the non-member status? Can they hold office? Oh, non-members of the synagogue can hold office in the men's club? We're, we're an independent group. We have, we, we have our own dues. We do our own thing. Uh, we don't have any non-members that hold office. We have some non-members to help us plan plan some of those events. The, 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 most of the young members are the typical thing like this I described earlier, people with very, very young children who are just – Three three year olds and four year olds who are just not quite ready to join the shul and the financial commitment yet. That they're not under the bar by mitzvah um, timeline yet. And almost almost all of them uh, have joined the shul and brought their kids into our religious school and 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 worked their way through this the, the system. But it's it's usually for a very short time for the first few years and then 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 that seems to go away. The um, we have a few more comments here that people can read to <laughs> we should have. Cool, value-added, and fun activities. Uh, yep. Rich Nepp suggested an uh, annual essay competition for younger kids and color scholarships yeah. for high school Excellent. age Excellent kids. idea. Excellent. That's, you know, it depends on, on your financial situation of your club, I guess. But, Absolutely. Uh, well, you can, you, can add, you can do a fundraiser for it as well. And... Um, I think Eric Gamundra has a question about would our slogan of involving Jewish men in Jewish life be off-putting to non-Jewish husbands of Jewish wives? But I think we've worked on that issue, and um, you know, now we have new tagline that we that we promote for for the federation. And you know, but that's okay. These guys are married to Jewish women, and 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 you know, they know what's coming down that line. We we haven't had any trouble with that. Let's let's put it that way. Our particular club has not had any trouble with that. Um, a couple of other events we've had with young guys. We we've had a poker and parsha. We actually had it at the rabbi's house. Set up some poker tables in the basement. Rabbi Rabbi sat down with us, played poker, stopped the game about halfway through, gave a ten minute parsha, mm -hmm. uh, a, a commentary on that particular week's parsha. Excuse me. Then went back to play poker. And all the money went, to, and all the money went to charity. Or no, I think we gave the guys a choice: fifty-fifty, half the charity and half of them. That's what it was: fifty-fifty. Um, so that worked really well. I got younger guys to come as well. My seventeen-year-old came at the time. He was he. I think it was like five bucks or ten bucks to buy in. It was very nominal, and all the money went to the rabbi's discretionary tzedakah fund. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Very Thanks, check. Barry, for putting that up. That kind of reminded me of that of that event. Yeah. Uh, I think that I'm that sure there's a ton of good ideas out there. Anybody else want to type up some success stories that they have out there? I'd like to see some more success stories. Okay. Right. This scholarship program, excellent. Oh, multiple people are typing. Good. Okay. <laughs> Cigar, steak, liquor, excellent. Steak in the sukkah and steak and scotch in the sukkah. One of the clubs in Chicago, I was talking to them. They have a, they had a very successful chili um, chili uh, bake off contest, chili contest, and um, with it blind judging. I think the men's club went up against some of the other auxiliaries in the synagogue, and they won. Okay. 
update. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. Miles is good. Good, sims good topic there. Yep. Yeah, yeah we, we have a we have we have a guy in our men's club that basically says he he's a doctor and he says he will always rearrange his schedule in order to come to hear men's voices. So I think that's pretty powerful. Club staff we, two location for homeless shelter, excellent. <laughs> what does that mean, Stan? Adult activities aren't using <laughs> bars, but doing things that wives may remove from the agenda. Do you need, how do you do that with, if you don't have dollar bills anymore in Canada? I don't know how they do those adult activities any longer. Do, the, do those loony coins actually work? Yeah. You know, bars are great. We have Sometimes we have our planning sessions um, at, at, over some beers at a pub. Well, we've made Comedy. an educational experience at a, you you know, at a brew pub where where you can get a tour and learn about there you the go. process as well. Comedy show review with skits and songs. Look at that. We have all the rabbis, the spouses, the president. Excellent. Oh, that's that's got to be hysterical. Mike Raymer criticism. That's interesting. Midnight movies. Excellent idea, Mike Rob. Talmud on tap. Sweet. Yeah. So I mean the. I guess the bottom line is um, have fun, make it fun. Guys want to have fun; they want to get out of the stresses of their lives. Let the um, let them come up with these great ideas. Sunday morning walks, excellent. Um, these guys want to come up with these ideas. Let them come up with these ideas. Um, let them let them fester and grow and build. And they're going not not everyone's going to work perfectly. Some are going to work better than others. Some are going to fail, and that's okay. But give them a try. The worst that can happen is we tried this. It didn't work out for us. But the, you know, but if you don't do it and you, and you just talk about not doing it, it's it's totally different. So just experiment. What what's the worst that's going to happen? Yellow candles, excellent. Sadaka. Right, that's one of the things we talked about earlier, Sadaka. And Rich, uh, about the YouTube issue, Rich Neb, um, I've actually started on that training channel. There's only one video from LDI on it, but I'd like to capture, my strategy is to capture either from people sending me the video or grabbing people at convention, capture the LDI type presentations, the 10 minute presentations and get a series of videos up on the on the YouTube training uh, site on um, as as you suggest. Yep. Uh, fun free event where they do hikes. Excellent. Tailgate party by kosher. Yeah, the Chicago and Milwaukee clubs do that. They 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 say it's a baseball game. It's the Cubs and the Brewers. I don't know if it's either one of those is a real baseball team, but um, they go to that event. My training with the union. I could find many wheels that other people do. Helping hands to feed the homeless, barbecue night, excellent. The ideas just pop in here like crazy, Bob. Okay. Well, I think that um, though we're co we're coming to uh, I think coming towards the end. Few people have um, ideas. I mean, I'm going I'm to type. I'm going to type in my email address here, and if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, um, I'm going to post it here. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to actually talk to you if you want. But you can start with an email. If I type it right, it will work better. Moonshine dis distilleries, excellent. Yeah, there's nothing really new uh, out there. It's all take the ideas that are out there. Go to the Jeff JMC website. Um, there used to be a lot more. I understand they're going to be they're going to be putting it back out there. But there used to be a lot of torch awards ideas out there. Go out and read what other clubs have done successfully, 
and then take what they take the gist of their program and create it and mold it and form it in, into it into um, something that fits your club a little bit differently, a little bit better. Uh oh, I think I've lost them. Stan cannot hear me. Okay, I can hear you. And uh, oh, okay, very Stan. This is Stan, I guess. So um, take the you know take take what other other t other folks have done and, and 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 mimic it. Maybe you have some friends that aren't Jewish, but they and they're active in their other their particular religious organization. Ask them what they do to have fun with their guys. And then t then take it and, and mold it to something that 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 you feel more comfortable with. There's lots of lots of ideas out there. And uh, Stan mentioned just as a fi final note that the torch awards are still there and all of them you know, i don't think all of them. i know ours from 2011 or it was not posted our winner when it was gone so i don't know what uh, where they are okay right. well uh, according anyway, to according to a, um to marty Melnick, they're going to get yeah. them up, up and uh i think that you should try to look at the torch awards as you do your programming for next year as well and okay. uh Thanks very and we, much. And it's, and it's nine o'clock in St. Louis and ten o'clock out there on the coast, uh, on and, so East Coast. And, and so one more time, oh. if you if you didn't register, please send me the um, send me your name at training at fjmc org, and I'll get you on the list, and I'll email you the presentation, and also send you uh, a note when the video is ready to view. And, and I will see all you guys in Boston. For participating and see you in Boston. Thank you very much, Mark. My pleasure. Appreciate your being the first uh, first guinea pig. And, Bob, uh, thank you for the, being the uh, moderator. I appreciate it. Okay. And good night to everyone. Thank you.